On today's show, we have former three-time WWE Tag Team Champions, two of the toughest wrestlers alive, and quite possibly the greatest tag team ever. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Axe and Smash Demolition. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining us today. Our pleasure. My pleasure. Yeah, thanks for having us. Oh, Bill, how are you doing? I haven't, I haven't seen you for a while. <laughs> well, it's uh, you, you pushed that uh, cold weather from Minnesota down here to... Atlanta and it's chilly. It's in the fifties for us. That's freezing. <laughs> well, well, you know, we're talking snow tomorrow here. Oh my God! Keep it up there, Barry. <laughs> well, it, it's probably going to follow me to Philadelphia on Saturday when we're there. <laughs> oh, I know. Now, uh, many people know you from uh, Demolition Guys, and uh, you know both of you had uh, uh, great singles careers, too, before uh, becoming a tag team. So, uh, Barry, uh, which did you enjoy uh, more, being a singles wrestler or working as part of a team? Uh, part of a team, a lot, lot better, you know, especially when you had a partner like Axe. It kind of, uh, you know, I had to scream and yell at him to get out of the ring so I can get in the ring. So he was a great partner. Now, uh, Bill, what do you think the hardest part about transitioning from a singles career to a tag career is? Well, I think you have to you have to be willing to sacrifice a little bit of time in the ring, and uh, but it, it compensates because the longevity. I think Barry and I have talked about this a number of times. You, you can you can exist a lot longer with a with a good partner. And, uh, you know, you can go full speed. If you get tired, you tag in. He goes full speed to get your little bit of respite. So our philosophy was always to blow our opponents up, they, uh, make their tongue hang out as far as you could. They'd trip over it, and they'd be willing to do anything we wanted. <laughs> now, um, obviously, demolition has been, and, and we think unfairly, uh, compared to many of the other tag teams throughout history, um, Bill, what do you think made Demolition different from all those other tag teams? Well, I think that, and I think Barry will tell you the same thing. We've done a number of interviews and that question's come up. I think the fact that we could both wrestle, we could both talk. We didn't need a manager, but we had the advantage of having a manager and good ones periodically. And I think that we had matches with, Big guys, small guys, guys our size, guys in between. And we, we weren't afraid to have good matches. We weren't afraid to go out there and put emphasis on having a good match versus emphasis on how good we looked. The better match we had, the better we looked. Mm. All right, well, Barry, uh, what was the tag team scene like during your time in the WWF? Was it highly competitive? Well, it was incredible. It was the... Uh the greatest tag teams ever in wrestling. I mean, from, from the, the bottom tag team to the top tag team, there wasn't a whole lot of difference. It was just who got lucky to be in the spot and, you know, who got the crowd behind them. So it was just, you know, it, it was a great time to have tag team wrestling. And we were just, you know, grateful that we were there at that time. All right. Um, now, now, guys, uh, Demolition had a different look. Uh, you know, masks and face paint made you both uh, very intimidating to your opponents. Uh, now, Bill, uh, you were you were part of the first Demolition. Uh, whose idea was it to wear the face paint? Well, I think it was a, a combination of a number of people. I can't take credit for all that. We tweaked, and even when Barry came, we tweaked our outfits, our appearance. You know, you, you have to find something that you're comfortable with. And, of course, we were supposed to be the clones of Legion of Doom and all that. And I think we set ourselves apart in the fact that, I'm, like I mentioned, we could work with anybody. Um, and, you know, and, and both of those guys are friends of ours, but they were a little different style. They were pounders and going after people, and people had to feed them. But we could work with big guys, small guys. So we tweaked the appearance. We tweaked the outfits. We tweaked our, our working styles. But the one thing that was always consistent in, in Barry was always uh, willing to to work hard. I'm willing to work hard, and we wanted to have the best match on the card. So, and I think a lot of that too is a lot of the tag teams they didn't think we were going to be that good. 
And then after six months of seeing how we were working, I mean, pretty soon all the tag teams wanted to work with us because they knew they were going to have good matches. And that's, that's what the whole, the whole thing's about having good matches and the better matches you have, the better push you get. And, you know, it's just, uh, great to be involved in great matches. Absolutely. Now we, we briefly taught, touched on the face paint. Um, Barry, did you, did you enjoy wrestling in the face paint or was it hard to do? I would imagine that as you like sweat, it would get in your eyes. Was that ever a, a problem with you guys? No, in fact, uh, I really enjoyed it because, you know, uh, Barry Darso never made money in wrestling, but when Barry put the face paint on and became Smash and was Axe and Smash, we became a couple of different characters and what what ourselves were. So you kind of got into that feeling and you were a different person when you were Axe and Smash. So for me, I I really liked putting the paint on. You know, that one little layer of face paint, believe it or not, gives you anonymity. You know, we can wear the paint and be recognized as Axe and Smash. And walking down a hotel or a street, going to a restaurant, especially when we weren't around Fuji, people, they would look at you, they'd say, <laughs> he looks for me or they look for me, but they really couldn't recognize you. And we had our <laughs> privacy. Nice. That's great. Now, you just brought him up. Mr. Fuji uh, was your manager for uh, quite a while, and it's uh, it's common knowledge that he was uh, quite the prankster. Um, Barry, do you have any good Mr. Fuji stories you can tell us? Yeah, I really don't have a lot of stories. I mean, we were just lucky to have Mr. Fuji as a manager. He was he was a very good friend of ours, and, and he actually would tell us things that we would do right and wrong in the ring and everything, so... You know, it was just great to have Fuji around, and, and he never ribbed us or anything, and thank God for that, because he did do some pretty terrible ones to some different people. But I, I really don't want to get into what he did. Sure. And, uh, Bill, do you think uh, that Mr. Fuji was the best manager for you guys, or uh, would you have liked to have worked with someone, somebody else? Well, no, we requested Fuji. You know, I think everybody remembers that we had uh, Sullivan at the beginning, and he, not, not anything against him as a negative, but his personality was more of a jokester and off the wall out of left field. And with the character that we had, Demolition, you know, uh, our impression when we first came out, our intimidating factor, what we were trying to project, we needed somebody who was uh, more sinister. And the, the main guy at that time was Fuji, so we asked to have Fuji as a manager, and, you know, they gave him to us, and, and after that it was a full go. Sure. Now, uh, guys, uh, you know, with Halloween right around the corner, uh, can you uh, each tell us maybe uh, your scariest moment in the ring? Uh, Bill, if you want to start first, was, do you ever have a scary moment in the ring that, you know, I don't know, something might happen? Uh, I don't I don't really I don't really remember off the top of my head. Uh, All right. No worries. But, but, but according to according to this time of year, we did have a lot of events that uh, we went to in the Halloween period and in. Literally, hundreds of kids would come dressed as Axe and Smash. <laughs> That's great, Fuji. So I guess that was a compliment, you know. Of course, and we're going to be at, we're going to be in Philadelphia this Halloween. So I guess after the matches, we're already paid enough. We might as well go up and trick or treat, Barry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I tell you, one of the scariest things that it could have been for me, and thank God that uh, he was a friend of ours. It was when uh, Andre the Giant would stand on your stomach, and thank God he was a friend of ours, and and would get off when he knew that uh, you were you couldn't breathe anymore. Because that could have been a scary moment when uh, when he's doing stuff like that. Absolutely. Now, uh, demolition has always been synonymous with being tough uh, in the ring, uh, pretty smash mouth style. Um, Barry, did anybody ever complain about you guys being maybe too tough on them in the ring? No, I, I don't think so. Everybody, uh, you know, we worked very stiff and, uh, we wanted them to work stiff with us. So we did get a lot of potatoes back, but it really didn't bother us too much. That was just a, a great way to work. And, you know, we, we hoped everybody worked like that. All right. Awesome. Uh, Bill, now, uh, who came up with your finishing maneuver, the demolition decapitation? 
Oh, God, I don't really actually remember. I know I got drafted into doing the high-flying part. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but that, that was good in, in, in respect that all I had to do was come off the rope. Barry had to pick up all these guys that sometimes were light, sometimes were very, very heavy. So I guess of the two, I had the best part of the job. <laughs> yeah, but you you always got the guy's feet landing on you all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> One time it was scary though when when we did it in uh, in Oakland with uh, Barry had uh, Martell on the outside. That's pretty pretty uh, steep drop onto the cement floor. So I know I felt that one. I think as much as Martell probably did. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. What was so bad was uh, before all that Vince's. Uh, Oh, yeah, tonight, uh, Bill, why don't you go off the second rope onto the floor? <laughs> and, uh, you know, it was just like a no big deal. And it's a cement floor, and he's coming, you know, 10 feet in the air, coming down on on Martell on my knee. You know, it's like, oh, yeah, no big deal. Just go ahead and do it. Yeah. Now, guys, uh, this past year we saw the Bushwhackers get inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame, and I might speak for everybody here, but I think it's about time uh, we see Demolition take the rightful place. Barry, uh, do you think uh, when do you think Demolition is going to be taking their place in the Hall of Fame? Do you think it's about time? Overdue? Boy, I, I don't know what what's happened with that. It, it sure would be great to get in there, but yeah, there's so many great tag teams and everything, and, and you never know what's going to happen. And you know, Bill always says. Yeah, the only way we're going to get in the Hall of Fame is we'll have to buy a couple of tickets to go. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, I think well, you guys will should wouldn't be waiting too long. Hopefully, we'll get you in uh, so, sooner than later. Now, uh, you guys both, um, you get to see that certain people induct uh, people into the Hall of Fame. Who do you think would be the best to induct demolition into the Hall of Fame? Oh God, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't even have an idea of who. Who would be good? I, I thought Fuji would have been, but Fuji Shell's not very good at this time. Yeah. Uh, you know, and like Barry said, we have no control over that, whether we whether we get in or whether we don't get in. I mean, it'd be nice if we were recognized, but, you know, neither one of us are going to lose sleep if we don't, <laughs> simply because we know in our hearts that we did the best we could do, and fans tell us all the time that they appreciate it, so... You know, it's just a just a footnote. Mm-hmm. Now, you you kind of mentioned it. Uh, do you think there's any other tag teams that you think deserve to be in the Hall of Fame that you guys worked with? Oh God, yes, it, uh, the Bulldogs. Uh, I don't yeah. know. If Mark, I don't know if Martell and I think Tito's in it, but is Martell in? Them? See, I don't really know who's all here or not. Yeah, yeah, I don't even know, but, you know, some of the greatest tag teams, you know, Ray Stevens and Pat Patterson way back then. Mm-hmm. You know, there's there's teams from a long time ago that were just incredible. Mm-hmm. Now, guys, uh, you know, Axe and Smash were not the only members of uh, Demolition. Uh, what did you guys think of uh, Crush? Was he a good fit into Demolition when he came in? Well, you know... Uh... He was he was thrust into the situation because I had a I had a health scare there for a period of time, had an allergic reaction to a shrimp dinner I had, and uh, you know Crush Crush was a a good friend of ours. Uh, it, it's just sad that he passed so young, and he was thrust into a situation where it wasn't he wasn't going to be able to be successful. You know. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was always action and smash, and they knew us, and they knew how we operated in our interviews. And Ryan was was younger and less experienced. He gave it 150%, but he just was in a situation that he could not be successful, and it wasn't because of him. It's We were already there and established, and he was trying to take the place of, of one guy. So, you know, he tried his best, and we have fond memories of being around him and traveling with him, and it's just sad that he's not here. Mm-hmm. Barry, Barry, any thoughts? Yeah, he was, uh, you know, a great friend of ours, and, and you know, if he wasn't on the demolition and he came in and was just a single worker in there, he would have got a big push and he would have been great. 
But like Bill was saying, it's it's how do you, you know, take axe and smash, and all of a sudden one of one of them are out and another one's in at the same time. It, it just, you know, you couldn't be replaced. Mm-hmm. And he was put into a really tough position. And I'll tell you, he did a really good job, though. And, uh, you know, like I say, he was a good friend of ours, and we sure do miss him. All right, guys. Well, uh, you know, before we uh, wrap this up, we got a little bit, a few more questions, but we want to promote you guys. You know, uh, this Saturday, October 31st, uh, the Keystone Championship Wrestling presents Slamoween, uh, where they can meet Axe and Smash Demolition. Uh, it's going to be at the Edward Bacon Center in Darby, Pennsylvania. Uh, guys, you can head on over uh, and pick up your tickets uh, at the at the. At the show, you can go to KeystoneWrestling.com or by phone at 484-764-3635. Uh, guys, what, what's the greatest part about, you know, meeting your fans at uh, shows like this? Well, you know, we get an opportunity. Before, we never got an opportunity to sit and chat with people. And it's nice to listen to them reminisce about something that was important to them. And I'll tell you what we'll do for the fans there. Everybody that comes dressed as Axe and Smash... We'll give them a free eight by ten. Awesome. Well, that sounds like a plan. How's All that? Right. How's that, Smash? Hey, I like it. I like it. That sounds good. There's probably going to be a lot of fans dressing up like us too. Yeah, we could draft a couple of them, put them in the ring, and we could just sneak out the back door. <laughs> I think that. I think that's the greatest idea ever. We don't have to get in the ring. <laughs> well, it's definitely thoughts like that that made you guys uh, tag team greats. I think probably the greatest of all time, but where where do you guys think that Demolition ranks um, as far as tag teams? Well, we're really number one. Yeah, I think that we're, you know, we're, we're just to be mentioned, you know, to do these podcasts, to do these interviews, it means that we had some success and we made an imprint on people and, and people are interested in wrestling. So, you know, we appreciate the fans. We appreciate you guys uh, that, uh, that interview us and keep us alive on any out there. And, uh, you know, it's hard to rank one, two, three, or four. Barry and I often talk. There's there's a, probably uh, 100 million people over in Europe and in Asia, you know, that, that don't even know who Demolition or anybody is. So to be important here in the United States or in Europe or South America is important to us. Yeah, it's like a, a lot of times the fans will come up when you're signing autographs and say, you know, who is your favorite team? Well, we're our favorite team. <laughs> right, Bill? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Oh. And then the next thing you say, I used to like you guys. What do you mean, used to? <laughs> <laughs> now, now, uh, now, Barry, uh, are there any tag teams out there today, maybe, uh, that you think could have given uh, Demolition a run for their money? No, you know, I, I haven't really uh, been watching a whole lot of wrestling, so, you know, I, I don't I don't know. I I think what would have been great was uh, if we could have wrestled Austin and The Rock. That would, that would have been a good one, huh, Bill? Yeah, yeah. I'm the same as Barry. I, I, I get up so early in the morning to I teach school, and I've got to get up at 4.30. So for me to... You know, to be up late is a is a trial, and, and I don't get a chance to watch us. And then fans come up and they they talk about this guy, that guy, and you know, after a while, you lose contact with the people that are on uh, the big companies, and you don't really know them, so sure. it's hard to judge. Sure. Um, now, like we said, we're winding down. We we don't want to take too much more of your time, but um, do you guys maybe have one? accomplishment in the ring that you guys think is your, your greatest accomplishment that you've had? Oh my, that's like a t- guy that has five kids, which one he loves the best. You yeah, know, it's, it's hard to say cause there's so many things that have, it was great. Yeah. We had, we had, a, we had the opportunity really. And it's not just BS to work with some fantastic opponents and just to choose one or, two or three, you'd be leaving out a dozen. Uh, I think just being able to have the longevity and the popularity that we had, and, you know, maybe when when we, people mention about the the championship duration, 
you know, when you're in the forest, you don't see the trees. So we weren't even aware how long we had to belt. We just wanted to be the champions for as long as possible. And it turned out to set a record. Yeah, and, and you know uh, what's funny is, you know, you, you go out and you're, you're getting ready to wrestle the Bulldogs, and, you know, you, you have a match, and at the end of the match, the people go nuts, and, you know, it's one of the greatest matches you've had. You, you come back in the locker room, and, you know, you're all excited and everything. You say, God, I'm not going to have a match better than that ever again, you know. And then mm-hmm. the next night, you're wrestling the Heart Foundation, and the same thing. You go, holy cow, it's the best match we're ever going to have. Mm-hmm. Then the next night, you have another one and another one. It's like every night you have the greatest match you've ever had. That's what's kind of that's what's fun. Definitely, yeah. it's been a real honor to speak with you tonight. Uh, once again, uh, you out there, everybody listening, you can meet Axe and Smash this weekend, Halloween night. Uh, for all the information, head on over to ESSpromotions.com. dot uh, com, guys. It was a pleasure talking with you, and we really appreciate it. Oh, yeah, good talking to you too.